your life praising God Monday to Sunday January to December just imagine your life your breath your everything praising the Lord I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ and we have come together as a family of God in our father's presence to offer him praise and thanksgiving to give him all that we have as living sacrifices before him to hear and receive his word to repent on our behalf and on behalf of many others there i will ask you children of god wherever you are that you get on your knees and we go before god in repentance Father, we come before you in repentance. Every one of us just go before your God in humility. He knows you inside out. He understands you before you know yourself. Just go before him in repentance. Lord, we are not even worthy to sit before you. But our hearts are yearning to know you more than ever before. Have your way, Jehovah Shammah. 
have your way in our lives. Vindicate us, O God, from any kind of sin. Give us grace, Abba Father, to overcome the sin, the world, and the devil they are in, that we will see your glory as your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all those who truly repent and turn away from their shortcomings, their iniquities, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all sinfulness, and give you grace to overcome the enemy's strategies through Jesus Christ, our Lord. As children of God, we shall pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, allowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory belong to you alone, now and forevermore. Amen. Let us praise God for his mercy. Oh Lord, open our lips. Let me ask you to stand up and we put in practice just that which we have said. Our mouth to sing the praises of God. Everyone, make sure you are doing some dancing. Make sure you are doing something to praise the Lord. Let us invite the Bethesda Choir to lead us in that session. Bethesda. Hallelujah. Amen. As we're going to praise the Lord in your house, in your home, you can join us together. We are going to praise the Lord with our lips, with our hearts, with our minds as we offer everything we have unto Him. Hallelujah. We give you praise, Lord. It is coming from my heart. Praise and thanks unto you, Lord. All the things that you have done, I'm grateful for your love. I'll give you the praise. It is coming from my heart. Praise and thanks unto you, Lord. All the things that you have done, I'm grateful for your love. It is coming from my heart. It is coming from my heart. Praise and thanks to you, Lord. All the things, all the things that you have done, I'm grateful for your love. I'll give you the praise. It is coming from me. It is coming from my heart. I'm grateful for your love. I give you the praise. I'm counting my blessings. I'm counting my blessings. I just can't keep it to myself. Yeah. When I thought that he has done too much, oh, Jesus did again. Oh, I'm counting my blessings. I'm counting my blessings. Oh, can keep it to myself when I thought that he has done too much. Oh, Jesus said it again. I can't take it enough. Oh, I shout it loud from the mountain top. I can take it now.
that very heart come on somebody lift up your hands and begin to offer him a sacrifice of the words from your mouth tell him lord you're so wonderful you're so good tell him my heart is desperate to worship your name tell him there is nothing that is as your name tell him lord i need you every hour every moment i need you hallelujah somebody worship him in his splendor worship him in his majesty wherever you are you have an opportunity to lift up your voice and glorify God in that place lift up God in that office lift up God in that shop 
Lift the name of the Lord in that class where you are. In your own voice. Do not mind about others. Just speak words of exaltation. Words of extortion. Lift him higher. Lift him higher. We lift you higher. 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 When the praises go. His glory comes. We lift him when we praise you we feel this confidence that your glory will be manifested in every heart when we praise you Jehovah Shema that your glory will reign in our duties in our lives in our houses that when we praise you in truth and in spirit that your glory will be filled up in our marriages in our relationships in our connections that your glory will fill up our ministry We want to see your glory. We want to see your glory. We want to see your glory. In Uganda, let this nation, Uganda, see the glory of the Lord. I declare and decree in the name of Jesus. Let this nation of Uganda be swallowed up by the glory of the Almighty God in every corner of every district in Uganda of every corner of every parish in Uganda of every corner of every diocese in Uganda let the glory of God fill up every facet let the glory of God fill up the parliament of the Republic of Uganda let the glory of God fill up the judiciary oh Abba Father let the glory of God take up the executive yes only your glory come and lift up your hand wherever you are we want to see the glory of God in every church in every house let anything that is not of the Lord lose its grip in Uganda we put a curse on homosexuality we place a curse on homosexuality we place a curse on lesbianism we place a curse on witchcraft we place a curse on false teachers we place a curse on, on everything that is taking us away from the will of God we want to see the glory of God in Uganda, where the praise is going, your glory comes down. In Uganda, where the praise is going, in America, 
glory comes down in England when the praises go up. His glory comes. His glory comes down in every nation when the praises go up. His glory comes. His glory comes down. Go your glory in Sweden. His glory comes. Your down. glory in Kenya. When the praises go up. His glory in Tanzania. His glory comes down. His glory in Rwanda. When the praises go up. His glory everywhere. His glory comes down. In our marriages. When the praises go up. How we long to see your glory. How we long to see the glory of God. In that family where they are struggling with tuition. In that family where they are struggling with marital issues. May the Lord speak to your husband. May the Lord speak to your wife. May the Lord speak to your son who is taking the wrong direction. Oh the glory of God fill up that bedroom. Oh, the glory of God, fill up that school. May the glory of God come to that school. That school. May the glory of God come to that university. Oh, the glory of God, take over every heart. May the glory of God bring us to a place of redemption. May the glory of God bring us to a place of victory. That in this season, the glory of God will be manifested. That all prophet liars will lose their grip. For you are glorious and worthy to be praised. You're the Lamb upon the throne, upon the throne, and unto you we lift our voice in praise. Lift up your hand and your voice and sing it. You are glorious and worthy to be praised. You are the lamb upon the throne. Oh, you gave your life. That we may be vindicated. We want to see your glory in every ministry. We want to see your glory in the lives of men that have given themselves to serve you, to support words of hope. We want to see your glory in the life and families of men and women that supports the ministry of words of hope. Father, we want to see your glory in their marriages. We want to see your glory in their children. We want to see your glory in what they do. Bless every heart. You are the lamb upon the throne. And you are the lamb that caused us to see that in every house there should be a word of hope. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Together and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. I mean, I'll ask you to sit and listen to the reading of the word. Thereafter, we shall offer and then listen to the word. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good. 
and all the time. God is good, and that is nature. Wow. Yes. Wow, wow, wow. Our reading is coming from the book Genesis, chapter 22, from verse 1 to 20. Genesis 22, from verse 1 to 20. The Bible says, Now it came to pass after these things that, that God had tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. And he said, Take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young, man, young men with him and Isaac his son. And he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey, the lad, and I will go yonder and worship, and we will come back to you. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac's, Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father, and he said, Here I am, my son. And he said, Look, the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. And the two of them went together. Then they came to the place of which God had told him. And Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order. And he bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. And he said, Do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will provide, as it is said to this day. In the mountain of the Lord it shall be provided. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of the heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son. In blessing I will bless you. And in multiplying I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven. And as the sand which is on the seashore, and your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. In your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned to his young men, and they rose and went together to Beersheba. And Abraham dwelt at Beersheba. Now it came to pass after these things that, I, that it was told Abraham, saying, Indeed, milk are also born children to your brother Naho. Praise be to God. Amen. Come on, clap for Winnie. Praise the Lord. Let me ask you to stand up. And we offer in the house of the Lord. We shall be led by these wonderful voices from Bethesda Ministries.
your life looking at him alone not at your beauty not your money your academic experience all that is good but it is only in him that you can live and move and have your being come on and clap your hands to jesus thank you lord for your goodness and now ladies and gentlemen may i invite all the children all the children to come and we shall pray all the children all the babies in the house come on wave to everyone in camera wave to them wave to those people wave to those people and tell them hey let's pray let us pray father we thank you because we have the gift of little ones amidst us we pray a blessing upon each one of them we pray that lord you will bless them they are your children even at such a time as this we want to see your glory in their lives every day in jesus christ our lord let me ask you to sit and we shall proceed hallelujah praise the lord god is good and all the time god is good and that is nature wow amen amen i didn't see emmanuel saying that god is good and all the time he's a good god he's a good god my name is simon peter and i come to you from the province of the church of uganda and i give glory to god today we are here live from the archbishop's palace it is a good thing and we thank the lord for the archbishop who has opened this place that you may receive the word every sunday at such a time as this kindly appreciate the archbishop and mama praise the lord i want to also appreciate bethesda ministries for always presenting themselves to serve their god approved workers of the lord in his kingdom thank you so much in a special way allow me to appreciate words of hope words of hope ministries lives are vindicated lives are transformed hope is brought alive in many lives because of the words that are spoken in all corners and i know that i know every hand every heart every family every individual that puts this to life well god will bless you praise the lord allow me to appreciate you who are seated on your wherever you are whether your phone whether your your gadget whichever gadget you're using thank you for always being ready to listen to the word of god you in Abu Dhabi, you in Qatar, you in China, America, Sweden, USA, wherever you are, England, God bless you. You're feeding your soul with the right content. God bless you. Allow me to appreciate Raymond, a man of seasons. He's able to do this in the name of Jesus. Bless him with a hand clap. God bless you, brother. You're reaching out to many. Now today, uh, children of God, we are talking about sacrifice as an act of obedience to God. Let me say it again. Sacrifice as an act of obedience to God. Surely, when you talk about an act, in other words, you do it. If you choose to do anything, you're choosing to act. And, 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 and sacrificing is a choosing action. You choose to take it up and you do it for your God. And specifically today, we want to say it is an act of obedience. Praise the Lord. What is it? What does it mean to sacrifice? It is to give something valuable to, your, to, to, to someone in order to help another person, in order to be deeply, uh, deeply uh, uh, connected to something or something you give away to someone that you choose to obey and give 
allegiance to. Uh, for example, I was thinking about many things before I even go higher or deeper about this sacrifice, being obedient. I, 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 was, I was thinking about families. Do you know that God is calling each one of us to sacrifice for our families? Praise the Lord. As an act of obedience and as, as an act of, of, of allegiance to what uh, God has given us. I have seen many men sacrificing important engagements for the sake of their family. I have seen many women sacrificing their interesting careers for the sake of their family. I mean, this is something that is very, very important for us as children of God. But in a special way, I want to speak to anyone who is a child here. If you're a child, I don't know how old you are, but if your mother and your father, if people that you call elders are still with you, you have the opportunity to listen to this today. Do you know that you can live longer when you walk in obedience to your parents? Do you know that your life can keep you, you can keep here for so long if you are the kind of child that sacrifices to honor your parents? When I talk about this, about that, I am talking about two things. Honor your parents with what you have. Give to your parents. Give to those elders sacrificially. You will see the glory of God upon your life. Praise the Lord. But I want also to say to us that when we talk about sacrificing uh, to God, it is important for us to think about what God has done for us by giving us his only son who gave himself as a ransom. First Timothy chapter 2 beginning at verse 3 that they may know the truth that this is the truth that is also there is only one God and one mediator between God and man the man Jesus Christ who gave himself as what? As a ransom. Jesus Christ gave himself to be nailed on that cross to be treated like that on that cross for you and he did that in obedience of the will of his father on many occasions we he, we will read that he says it is the will of my father for example in john chapter one in john chapter four beginning at verse maybe 32 he says my will is to do the will of my father and we also read a scripture when he was in the garden at at Gethsemane, and his bible says she sweat blood and he was saying please take this cup away from me not my will but as your will in other words in obedience jesus christ gave himself so as we talk about sacrifice and act of, of obedience we want to borrow that leaf from the man jesus christ himself listen to me i want to be affirmative here there is no any other sacrifice that can save your life apart from what jesus did for you on the cross let me say it again i want to be assertive here there is nobody that can stand in the place of jesus there is no one whether they have done what whatever they did cannot redeem you from what you have done hallelujah whatever they have done if you're listening to me and you still have this hope in the matters to redeem you you need prayers. And some of you are looking at the mother of Jesus, Mary, as the anchor between you and God. Listen to me. There is only one mediator between man and God, the man, Jesus Christ, who gave himself as a ransom. So if you are among them that do such things, come out and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Let's get to the gist of the matter. Sacrifice and act of obedience to God. If God is your God, then you must be willing to give that is what is valuable, that which is precious, that which you think is so wonderful for you. And as you give it, you give it and it is taken as an act of obedience. When we give to God, we must be the kind of givers that do it out of obedience not out of pride not out of 
proving certain things, not out of, you know, trying to show off. It should be an act of something that shows the obedience that we have. We are in such times as this when everyone wants to show that what they are doing, they are doing it for God. When they want to prove that whatever they are giving, they, aren't, they want to write names on what they have given. They want to, to, to cause everyone to understand that it is, it is, it, that they're helping God. I don't know about you, but I've seen men and women that seem to think they are helping God in what they are giving. Secondly, as we are in the days of Lent, in the Lent season, are you presenting your body as a living sacrifice or you are doing it because everyone is doing it? I know of people who are simply on a hunger strike. <laughs> they, they, they don't have this personal relationship. They don't have this very serious reason, this thing that causes them you know, to, to go before God in truth and in spirit. But they are doing it because mommy is doing Oh, everyone is. Oh, they are 40 days. I mean, it is not about God. It's about them. This morning, I want to say to you, child of God, present your life as a living sacrifice. Present your body as a living sacrifice. As an act of obedience to your God. And as you choose to obey God. You let go of the things that seem to be valuable to you. That seem to be taking you away from the will of God. You ought to drop them. In obedience you will put an end to drunkenness. In obedience you will put an end to, to adultery. In obedience you will put an end to fornication. As an act of obedience to the God that you have believed if you really obey God, you put an end to womanizing. If you really obey God, put an end to those things. Sacrifice them. They may seem to be so precious. They may seem to be so valuable. But because you want to obey, because you want to honor God, let them go. Hallelujah. Because you want to honor your father, you want to honor God, let them go. May the Lord speak to each one of us wherever we are. May the Lord cause us to see the power of obedience through what we give to him. Let's get to the scripture that we read together. We read a scripture in Genesis. It is Genesis chapter what? Genesis chapter 22. And we began with verse what? With verse 1. And it is from that that I will say to you many things. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham. And he said, here am. He said, take your son, your only son, <laughs> whom, you have, whom you love, and go to the land of Moria and offer him there as a burnt offering on, on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. Now, ah, listen. God <laughs> tells Abraham, I will even show you. But take that very boy whom God, God makes it so clear. The one you love so much. Your only son. Go to the mountain, I will show you. Sacrifice. And Abraham, the Bible says, so Abraham rose early in the morning. This guy didn't even ask questions. Like you who God tells you give that plot of land. And then you begin saying, but uh, well, is it really God? Like you who God tells you go and help that young man in prison. And then you say, mm, it may be my instincts. <laughs> Abraham. Abraham. In obedience. The Bible says in verse 3. He rose early in the morning. Saddled his donkey. And took two of his young men. With him. And his son Isaac. And he cut the wood for the burnt offering. And arose and went to the place. Of which God had told him. <laughs> when I read such scriptures. I imagine the power of obedience. You see, with obedience, you, you, you don't have many questions. If it is God who has said, you don't have questions of why me? Wow, how can it be? You simply go. Why? Because you choose to obey. 
Hallelujah. In this Lent season, people don't have to explain so much. You see, it began. You see. No, you know it is a day. It is, these are months of what? This is, these are 40 days of what? Of fasting. Just plan and begin working. This is the 22nd day. And we still have 18 days. Can you take them up? Without questioning. On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place. That means they had walked for three days. They had walked for three days, heading to a place that God will show him. He even doesn't know what he has is obedience. What he has is faith. I have chosen to obey God and I want to give what he has asked from me. Then Abraham said to the young man, stay here with the donkey. I and the boy will go over there and worship and come again. I love this. I love this. This guy does not tell them I have gone to sacrifice. <laughs> he tells them I have gone to worship. Now listen to me, child of God. Whatever you give to God must be an act of worship. You are extolling him exalting him, giving him his place as God in obedience. Whatever you want to give to God must be an act of sacrifice, must be an act of worship, must be an act of obedience to God, not to your reverend, not to your mother, not to your father, not to your friend. You are doing it to God. Listen to this guy. He tells the young man, I have gone up to do what? To worship. And then I come again back to you. He doesn't tell them. I have gone to sacrifice. These guys are maybe younger than him and stronger. And he chooses to just tell them. I have gone to worship. Hallelujah. And Abraham took the wood. Uh -huh, and the burnt offering. And laid it on Isaac his son. And he took his. In his hand the fire and the knife. So they went both of them together. Abraham got the firewood. <laughs> and laid it on the sacrifice. <laughs> but the sacrifice right now. Didn't know that it was the sacrifice. <laughs> and they walked together. Verse 7. Isaac said to his father. My father. And he said here I am my son. He said behold the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Listen to me. The burnt offering is asking. <laughs> the sacrifice itself is asking. <laughs> Hello? But this guy is, is so committed to be obedient to what God has said. These are the things that happened before we got to this generation where we are. People would give chunks of land and they know they're giving to God. They're walking in obedience. People would give chunks. They would work in obedience with God. They would not be first lied to. I know this generation. Some people simply begin to lie to you and confuse you. You can't tell what is right or wrong. You simply hear what the man of God is saying. And you follow. But those days... There was not too much. People would not explain to me. God, people knew their God. They walked in obedience. That is very possible even today in this generation. Somebody say amen. It is possible in your church for you to obey God and you do something better. And you do something bigger. bigger when you're listening to who? To God. And you do what you do in obedience to God. This guy <laughs> tells his son in verse 8. In verse 8, Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. So they went both of them. He doesn't tell his son, you are the sacrifice. He simply says, God will provide. That is the power of obedience. You know that it is not about you. You know it is not about you. You know it is about God. He tells his son, God will do what? Will provide. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built the altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac. I imagine 
How did he get Isaac to bind him? Bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Look at this kind of obedience. I imagine that even the sacrifice itself reached to a level and obeyed. <laughs> I just imagine. If along these sacrifices you bring and then you begin peeping whether the sacrifices have done. <laughs> Hello! Praise the Lord. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife. Ladies and gentlemen, Abraham is stretching his hand to sacrifice his son. His only son. His loved son. In obedience to who? To God. Verse 11 of chapter 22. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. He said, do not lay your hand on, your, on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God. Oh, I love that. You see, when you obey God, you have shown that you fear him. Hello? When you obey obedience to God is an attribute. Is, is, a clear show, uh, is a clear revelation that you fear God. Hallelujah. For now I know that you fear God. See, you have not withheld your son. Your only son from me. I want to speak to you who have withheld a lot of things from God. God has spoken to you about something. You know it. That you know it. But it is now 10 years you have never let it go. You have never given it. You have never dropped it. God has told you about that drunkenness. You know it is tearing your children. But you have never let it go. God has talked to you about that adultery. About the thing that you do. God has talked to you about that amount of money. That car. That land. Whatever it is. But you have not let it go. But you are quick to say. I fear God. I honor God. Listen to me. Sacrifice. Is an act of obedience. Do not withhold your time. To join the choir. Do not withhold your time to do something for God. To be an usher. To be a warden. Do not withhold your energy to go and do something for God. When you choose to obey God, you are a worshiper and you are a great sacrificer. Praise the Lord. Praise King Jesus. Do not lay your hand on that boy. For now I know that you fear God. The Bible says, and Abraham lifted up his eyes and look and behold, behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by his thorns, his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it as a burnt offering to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Who knew that a ram can come from heaven and just be stuck somewhere? Listen to me. When you obey God, you will see miraculous things. You will see extraordinary things. God will do things that you don't really expect. And they will happen. Hello? A ram is held. They don't know where it has come from. But it is somewhere. And out of obedience, God begins to open a door. For this guy. And so Abraham called the name of the place. The Lord will provide. The Lord will. As it is said to this day. On that mount. On that mountain. Of the Lord. He shall be provided. Now God has done something for Abraham. And Abraham does not call that place Abraham. He calls it. The Lord will provide. I I'm here to say to you, if you want to give anything to God, don't put your name. Call it something that glorifies God. Listen to this guy. After God has done such a great thing, a great thing, he calls it, the Lord will provide. Imagine you called that chair, the Lord will always provide for my family. And you didn't call it Kaketo Ronad. Now you see it is now five years everyone is looking at that chair and they don't see god they see kaketo 
The people in the Old Testament, the people in the Bible, whatever God did for them, they would name that thing what glorifies God, what lifts up the name of the Lord, not what lifts up their family. You go to a church and all the chairs are full of this chair was given by Benon and, and, and Okidi. <laughs> this altar was donated by Chita Amirike. Come on! Call those things what will glorify God. Imagine that chair is called the name of the Lord shall be praised in my family. Listen to me. That will always follow you as a family. You have the name of the Lord will always be praised in that family. But you see people look at it and all they see is is Turiabuzuka. <laughs> all they see is Okero. Obina. This chair was given to you by Nama Monde. 30 years, 40 years, they don't see God, they see Nama Monde. Hello, whatever you want to give to God, do not put your name. Put something that glorifies God. Amen. So Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will always provide. And it is said to this day, on that mount, the Lord shall be provided. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham the second time from heaven and said, by myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you. How many of you want to see the blessing of God in your life? Obey the Lord and give. Obey the Lord and sacrifice. Obey the Lord and see you self doing mighty things for God. He says, I will surely bless you. I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and shall the sun and as the sand that is on the seashore and your offspring shall possess. Your offspring shall possess the get of his enemy. <laughs> Hallelujah. And in your offspring shall all nations of the earth be blessed. Because you have obeyed my voice. Let me say that again. Because you have obeyed my voice. Let me say it again. Because you have obeyed my voice. God has spoken to you for so many years. God has spoken to you, my brother and my sister. Whether you are in the army or whether you are in, in hospital, wherever you are, be obedient and do something for God. Support someone somewhere. Look for that girl and support them. Support that guy who is struggling. Go to prison and support someone. Go to the hospital and give someone. Do something for God in obedience of his voice. Pay school fees for that girl. Obey the Lord. You will see his goodness. Petition for that young man. Give to that clergy that wants your help. Support that pastor who needs your help. And God will bless you. Come on, stand up on your feet. Think about your life. And how obedient you have been. Come on, lift him. And she's on now. This is a song of the
Come on, lift up your hand. When the boom is shut up, when the boom is shut up, we are feed an empona, we are feed an empona. When the boom is shut up, when the boom is shut up, we could be a good thing. face shine upon you. May the Lord give you grace to eat the fatness of the earth. May the Lord increase in you. I pray the blessing of God, the Father Almighty, the Son and the Holy Spirit. May that blessing remain with you now and forevermore. Amen. We shall invite the choir. Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon, be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Lord bless you.